Hey, welcome back. This is Ray with uh, Ray's Extreme Engines. Uh, I'm here with the uh, LT Engines. So if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Uh, also, share this video. Give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, it helps share this video out on YouTube. So I'm here to give you just a couple of basics why an LT engine is better than the LS engine. Uh, I know it's like uh, everywhere you go, there's LS engines. Everybody's doing LS swaps and so on. Well, LT has came up with these engines that, I mean, they're awesome engines. So I'll just give you a couple of things. Both of these are five threes. Uh, one of them, this one here is a five three, but this one has the eight speed automatic transmission. It's the eight, no, eight L 90 E. And that one has a four by four transmission, a four by four transfer case, excuse me. But it's a six speed, six L 80. Uh, I'll get you the exact numbers. You know that there's so many L80s and so on. 4L80E and, and I mean there's so many different transmissions out there now. So here we go. I'll, I'll give you this one. This is a 5.3. This one's a 5.3. On the LT motor, this one right here makes 355 horsepower and 383 foot-pounds of torque. Stock. That's just stock. So it being a 5.3, I'm going to show you what... Everyone out there is running after the 6.0 LS stock motors. And I know you can make more power out of a 6.0 uh, by changing cams out and so on. You can do the same thing here. You can, you can change out the cam and make more power. So here's a 6.0. The 6.0 out of the factory makes 300 horsepower and 360 foot pounds of torque. So if you think about that, that's a 6.0. This, this one right here is making 53 more horsepower. 53 more horsepower. And it's making approximately 23 more foot pounds of torque. So if you think about it, that's just off of a 5.3. Reason why is it's got larger heads, it's got more compression. Your, your 6.0 LS old style uh, has 9.4 compression. Your 5.3 here, they have 11.5, 11 to 1 compression. That's a lot of compression. The other thing about these is they have the, the direct pour injection. It's, say for instance, uh, uh, your spark plug goes on the cylinder head and then of course you got your valves. It's got fuel injection going directly from the cylinder head to your pistons. That's what makes it more power also because you, you can raise the compression. And here's another one. Everyone goes after the LS1 engines because it's aluminum block. Well, these are aluminum blocks as well. The LS1 engine, of course, a bigger engine, 5.7. It ranged from 305 horsepower to 345 horsepower out of the factory. This one still beat the, the LS1 engine out of even the Corvettes. The Corvettes had 345 horsepower, 365 foot-pounds of torque out of a Corvette, 97, 2004 Corvette. They had 345 horsepower and 365 foot-pounds of torque. This one still beat it with 355 horsepower, 383 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, and here's a here's a kicker. Okay, so if you got a five three here, five three here. So if you go with the old style five three, it's nine five compression, horsepower, two hundred seventy to two hundred ninety five max. They range different ranges depending on which one you want, LM seven and so on. And the max torque was three fifteen to three thirty five. So again, this is a better motor now. And I'm sure everybody's going to start jumping on these. Um, so this is what I'm going to do. I know on this 55 Bel Air here, I know you've seen it. It's got a 572. Yeah, it's got a 572 in it. And in fact, I'll open it up for you right quick. It's got a 572. Approximately eight, 860 horsepower to, to 900 horsepower. Uh, roughly around that area. It's got a 12 in one compression. It's got a huge hydraulic roller cam. Uh, it's got the Snapper EFI. So to make it more streetable, I'm going to end up putting one of these in here, which is probably more likely it's going to be this one, because it's got the eight speed automatic overdrive. The reason why is because I want the reliability. I want to go out there and drive it from, from Texas to California, from uh, California to uh, uh, Tri-Fi Nationals and so on. So I wanted something where 
I can just get in there and drive and not worry about it. You manage your gas mileage. I mean, this would be a huge gas mileage also. Uh, I may even put a supercharger in this one just on top and it's still be reliable and nothing else. And it just flies and it's ready to go. Uh, this truck up here that you see on the lift, it's got a 468 in it. I'm almost done with it. I gotta do the exhaust and then we gotta put a sniper EFI on it and it'll be good to go. Get ready for the paint job. And that'd be another, that's just another customer. I just wanna give you a, a brief, quick rundown why the LT is better than the LS. It's up to you, you can go with the LS or you can go with the LT. Yes, there's more modifications to put an LT in there than there is an LS. Uh, there's a lot more modifications, uh, a lot more fitting, a lot more fabricating, a lot more cutting. So, just wanna, but as you can see, the horsepower is already there. I know 355 horsepower compared to 900 horsepower, major difference, but reliability, I mean, unless it was a drag car, this is not a drag car, this is more of a show car. Going from here to the car show, going just to cruise. I mean, I don't have the tires in it to make it a drag car, and I don't want to start cutting it and put a roll cage in it. Because if I did take it to the track, they're going to kick me off the track. It's too fast for the track without a roll cage. So, here we go. There's two LS engines, I mean, two LT engines. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, again, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you on the next video. Oh, I will be doing a step-by-step -step putting this one and this 55 as well as a AL90E transmission in here, the eight-speed automatic. It's a huge transmission. So in fact, if you just come up here and you can see, uh, I may have clearance problems up here on this area and it might have clearance problems here because this is taller. Right now it's a four, a turbo 400. So I may have clearance problems, may have to do a lot of cutting to get this in there, but I'll do a step-by-step -step video on how to make one of these fit in there. Uh, of course, this one has 19,000 miles, and of course you can see the transfer case as well in this one. And this one I believe is 608E. Uh, I'll put that on the descriptions. Uh, again, there's so many transmissions, models and numbers, and it goes on and on and on. But uh, I will do a step-by-step -step on how to cut Fabricate what you need to do, which is the best motor mounts, which is the best trans transmission cross member, and so on. So, again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.